Good evening, everyone. I'm Frank Novak, and welcome to this Senate candidate edition of Point of Reference. Tonight, a brief glimpse of the seven candidates running for office, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. We are now pleased to welcome Sean Tuohy, Haverhill School Committeeman and mortgage broker to the program, running for the first Essex Senate seat. Welcome to the program, Sean. Good to be here, Frank. Okay, right off the bat, economic development. Uh, we, we're talking about economic development. Massachusetts taxes and regulations are a barrier to job creation, so you've said. How would you change that? Well, it, it, what I said, uh, what I feel is that the economic climate needs to be uh, a, a better environment. Um, you know, as far as sales tax are uh, concerned, uh, I believe we need to roll that back, uh, the 5%. Uh, being border communities uh, up here in the Merrimack Valley to New Hampshire, um, I think that's a problem. Uh, some of the barriers, uh, for example, in, in regulation and red tape uh, in, in, on the state level, where, for example, if you are, have a hair salon and you shut down, you're going to change ownership or transfer ownership to one, an employee, for example, Frank, uh, you'd have to shut that down, that business down, while that's going on. So that's one example of the type of regulations uh, that need to be looked at on a smaller level. Um, so. That's a bureaucratic regulation, it would seem, see, rather exactly. than a practical one for practical application. For economic aid to schools, of which you are a school committee, I mean, you're right in the mix there, of economic aid to schools, you'd work to provide more equity. How do you mean that? Um, as, as far as working, uh, getting more, you're talking, Frank, about Chapter 70 sure. allocation. Yep. Uh, that's the good thing about in, in, the, in the budget this year for FY13. It's, there's been an increase in Chapter 70 across, uh, across the state in the, in the neighborhood of 4, 4.5 percent, which has been helpful. Um, unfortunately, previous years being on the school committee, so this is my going on my ninth year, uh, that's been uh, funded uh, at a level of uh, number for, for many, many years, which is, you know, has a dramatic impact, uh, increasing class size, thing, which making it very, very challenging. I have two kids in the system uh, right now. So I, I've seen firsthand how that uh, can affect uh, class, not only as a school committee member, but as a parent <clears throat> across the district. Uh, the formula itself is basically uh, very, very challenging. You talk to people in the, in the, in the, st uh, in the state that write those, uh, write Chapter 7, are involved in that. It's a very complex, in my opinion, an antiquated formula. So that's the equity that we need to take, we need to take another look at that to make sure that, uh, that we provide more equity throughout, not only just the district, but out the, throughout the state. You've said that you've seen wasteful, how wasteful spending <clears throat> can hurt local communities. Can you give us an example and how would you fix it? Well, I think we need to get back to, to basics. Um, you know, you, you talk about uh, you, a lot of uh, publicity as far as the EBT scandal and reform and abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very important for, for me to say, not only as a, or as a Republican um, candidate, is to say, I'm not, we're not, I am not looking to get rid of the program. It's the, it's the wasteful spending. The Department of Transitional Assistance uh, uh, in, in the $32.5 billion budget uh, allocates around, in that department, about $400 million. So it's my opinion to look at, that's one area, for example, to take a look at reducing the abuse uh, and go back to basics. I believe in zero-based budgeting as well. It's a tedious process, as you know, Frank, but we, it's something we need to do. I'm up for the challenge, and it's going to require rolling up your sleeves and uh, uh, digging in real deep to make sure that we uh, take a look at every item, top to bottom review of government uh, as a whole, and we need to do that uh, as soon as possible. And I look forward to doing that the moment I'm in the legislature. You brought up the EBT card. Just <clears> briefly, <throat> in just a, maybe 10, 15 seconds, could you tell us what restrictions would you put on an EBT card? What should it be used for only? Well, it should be, you know, I, I think the, the intent is for the essentials, uh, Frank. Uh, but, for example, I've talked to local uh, businesses, I, I hate to name a few, but if you go to uh, a convenience store, Tedeschi's, for example, or any one of those locations, what, you, what, you won't, what could happen is uh, if someone wanted to buy scratch tickets, you know, alcohol, things of that nature, well, if they prohibit that, if you go to the counter and you're declined that, for example, you just turn around 10 feet, there's an ATM machine behind you. So you swipe your EBT card and there's cash, that you, and then you go back to the counter, if you will, and you're able to purchase those, in my opinion, unessential items, as you, I'm sure you agree with. Uh, so it's things like that that we need to look 
really hard at, maybe put further restrictions on uh, how much cash is available uh, from an ATM perspective. So I'm glad that the, uh, the legislature has been on top of it, uh, but uh, you know, once I, uh, I'm elected, I look forward to, uh, again, rolling up my sleeves and di digging a little bit deeper. Okay. You want to restore fiscal discipline. Where do you think it's been lax? Well, I, I, basically, it's ba the item I just mentioned. Uh, that's one particular area. I'm glad, uh, kind of a good segue, if you sure. will, for, for the comment and the question. Um, but again, I also look at top to bottom review. We need to really tighten our belts, and we have to control our spending. Uh, and again, I go back to what I said just a few minutes ago, Frank, and that's zero-based budgeting. You roll it back, let's get, get back to basics and look at line by line. I know it's tedious, but it's something we really need to do. It's sometimes said that too many goals result in too few accomplishments. If you were elected, what do you think you can specifically and absolutely deliver as a benefit to your district besides being just well-intentioned? <clears throat> well, I, I think what I, as I campaign throughout the district, uh, what people are really looking for is for transparency and accessibility. Uh, that's something I know, uh, you know, when you go with goals, that's one thing. But I'm a guy that rolls up their sleeves. I've been in business working very hard for 20, uh, 20 years. I've been uh, working, I'm a fiscal conservative. I've, I've demonstrated that on the Haverhill School Committee for the last nine years. Um, so people really want you or I to go in and fight for what they believe in and work on behalf of them. I hear that day in and day out as I campaign throughout this district. Uh, the, the response has been tremendous, Frank. Um, and, and those are the things that I will bring, to, that I promise that I bring to the, the taxpayers of the First Essex District is commitment, passion, and determination. I have to ask you, historically elected officials garner favor by how much they can give their constituency. Given the state of the economy, practical application will suggest the opposite. What people, what should people expect that they may have to deal without? And among those items, would pension reform be one of them? Well, I, I, I'm not going to promise anyone anything. All, all yeah. the only thing I can promise them is that everything is going to be on the table, including pension reform. But in order for me to be more specific, uh, you really need to go back to what I just said. You, I am committed to looking at every item in, this, in the budget, line by line. It's a tedious process, and I have no problem doing that. So that's the difference, I think, uh, that I can uh, demonstrate between maybe myself and other opponents that uh, you mentioned constituents. Um, there's no one on my committee, there's no one in, on my staff that is uh, you're looking for any positions down the road. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I have people that are excited about my campaign, that are on my committee. Uh, the people of the First Essex District that I've talked to are, are extremely excited about my candidacy. I am as well, obviously, uh, and I'm going to represent uh, them uh, with integrity, honesty, and passion and determination. Thank you very much. Sean Tui, Harold School Committee Man, vying for the Senate seat in the First Essex District. Thanks Thank very much for being here, Thank Sean. Thank we you, wish Frank. you the best of luck. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll be right back. I hope that you've listened and learned in an effort to help you decide which candidate to support in the upcoming election. And on election day, remember to vote, because if you don't vote, you don't count, and everyone should count. And as always, we hope that this program has been a point of reference for you. And until next time, my name is Frank Novak, and thanks very much for watching.